Purple members. Thank you. Well, it's uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, to thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to, to give this talk, and uh, it's a, a quite uh, it's a honor to be here uh, in this uh, special uh, uh, special anniversary anniversary of this institute that uh, had a, a huge. Uh, impact in our area of research, in our research area. Uh, well, I'm going to talk uh, about the joint work with Marco Martens and, uh, and Pablo Guarino no? in Rio. And uh, I'll start by uh, describing the theorem. Uh, the theorem says that uh, uh, that uh, any two C3 critical circle maps with this, the same irrational rotation number and the, the same criticality are conjugated by a C1 circle diffeomorphism. Uh, furthermore, the conjugacy is C1 plus alpha at the critical point for by, by universal positive alpha and uh, also that, uh, and this holds for any rotation number, no? any irrational rotation number, and uh, there exists a, a, a set of full Lebesgue measures of, uh, of irrational number, such, uh, such that if the rotation number bef uh, belongs to this set, uh, then uh, the conjugacy is in fact C1 plus alpha for by universal alpha. Well, this is the best possible because uh, uh, Edson de Faria and myself, we proved, uh, we gave counterexamples uh, several years ago, uh, stating, uh, giving examples of uh, uh, two mappings with the, the same uh, irrational rotation number, such that the conjugacy is not C1 plus alpha for any positive alpha. Uh, so. Uh, Is, is there an um, arithmetic condition on, on the set BA? And the other one is, uh, what happens when it's C1 plus alpha at the critical point and C1 uh, only globally? I mean, yeah, you, uh, you, you have uh, a uh, mixture of between where it's only C1 and... Yeah, uh, to get C1 plus alpha, uh, we need a special arithmetic condition, which is not the same as the one for diffeomorphism. They are uh, they are disjoint. Okay, so, uh, so it's a, it's an, uh, a different uh, set of uh, arithmetic conditions, and uh, uh, if this is p satisfied, we can spread this uh, property at the critical point to the whole circle. Okay, and the difficulty in, uh, in doing this is, is precisely that it, if the rotation number is too bad, then you have a, a long, uh, almost, almost parabolic, uh, almost parabolic uh, periodic point, and we can perturb in the middle the, the, uh, the mapping to, to avoid uh, uh, to destroy the possibility of, of, of C1 plus alpha conjugacy. Okay. Then, before explaining in, the, uh, in more details, I'm going to def define critical circle maps and so on. But before that, I want uh, to, to mention uh, uh, a few older results that goes in the same direction, and uh, the, the most uh, the most famous one is the so-called the muscle rigidity theorem, which was proved in in, in sixty eight, uh, stating that if, if you if you have two compact hyperbolic manifold of, of, of dimension greater or equal three, they, uh, that are homeomorphic, they are in fact uh, isometric, and in fact. Uh, uh, it's enough to, to have an isomorphism in the fundamental groups, be, between the fundamental groups. 
Another famous predicted result was uh, proved by Arman in, in 1979 and, uh, and improved by, by your cause in 84, uh, stating the, the similar result for a smooth uh, circle diffeomorphism. If they, ha they have this, the same rotation number of, of uh, diaphantine type, then they are smoothly conjugate. And uh, it was uh, known for uh, many years before that without this, uh, this arithmetic condition in the rotation number, the result is false because uh, the conjugacy may be really uh, very bad. Uh, uh, not even uh, 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 quasi-symmetric, for, for example. Uh, okay, another result in this direction was for for unimodal map, which is uh, infinitely renormalizable with uh, bounded combinatorics. This means that uh, they have uh, periodic, uh, periodic intervals around the critical point of, of bounded period. Uh, a, a sequence of those with bounded period, and, uh, uh, and the result is that uh, we get the C1 diffeomorphism of the, the real line that, uh, that conjugate the two uh, maps at the critical orbit. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, it is also uh, uh, for result in these directions. So let me start uh, quite slowly here. Uh, we are going to consider uh, circle homeomorphisms, uh, just continuous map of the circle without periodic point. Then, uh, then if we don't have periodic points, uh, Poincaré uh, showed uh, in the beginning of the previous centuries that uh, 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 that, uh, that combinatorially it is equivalent to a rigid rotation, meaning that there is a, a semi-conjugacy to, to a rigid rotation, and then we can associate it to, to, to such, a, uh, such a homeomorphism, uh, the, the rotation number, which is in this case ir irrational by the, the lack of uh, periodic points. Huh? Okay, and uh, a famous example, uh, a two-parameter family of ex examples of this situation is, is uh, the real analytic standard family. It has two parameters, A and alpha, and uh, the map is just X uh, goes to X plus A plus alpha over two pi, uh, sinus of 2 pi x uh, mod 1. Uh, and then we have two parameters. When alpha equal to 0, this gives just uh, the family of rigid uh, rotation. Uh, it's easy to see that when alpha is smaller than 1, the, uh, the derivative does not vanish. And then we have a, a, a circle diffeomorphism. And uh, so the dynamics is beside the periodic or quasi-periodic according to the, to the rotation number be, 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 being rational or irrational. And for alpha bigger than one, uh, we have chaotic dynamics. So this uh, type of uh, family was uh, uh, considered by, 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 by physicists as a transition between the quasi-periodic behavior and the uh, chaotic behavior. And, uh, and uh, for alpha equal to 1, uh, for, alpha equal, uh, for alpha equal to 1, we have precisely one critical point of cubic type. We still have a, a, an invertible map, but it's no, uh, no longer a diffeomorphism because it uh, has a critical point of, of cubic type. Uh, well, this is well known 
pictures. Uh, here is, is the two parameters, A and alpha. And uh, we have the so-called uh, uh, Arnold tongs starting at the rational points here in the, in the AX. No? Uh, those are open tongs. And inside uh, the pitch tongue, uh, the, the, the behavior is periodic. And uh, in the complement, the behavior is quasi-periodic. Uh, uh, the mapping is, uh, by Danjoar theorem, conjugated to, a, a, to, a, to an ir irrational rotation. And the, if you take, a, a, if we fix the, the parameter alpha, a positive one, you have this line here, it's going to cut the, the Arnold tongues in a, a set that is open and dense. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Hermann proved that the complement has positive Lebesgue measure. And uh, this is the graph of the rotation number, which is, uh, is flat at each uh, uh, irrational. And uh, if it grows, uh, grows uh, uh, monotonically. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you, f if you f we fix this line, uh, Pell alpha, uh, th then the, the set of, uh, uh, of parameters A, where the rotation number is irrational, and then we have a, a set of parameters satisfying these this diophantine conditions that I mentioned before. Uh, as I mentioned before, implies that the mapping is, is mostly conjugacy, uh, conjugated to a, to a rigid rotation. And there are a, a set of parameters which is uh, very bad, where the invariant measure is not absolutely con continuous. So the, the conjugacy is a homeomorphism which is not absolutely continuous. And uh, as I mentioned before, in 6 to 1, Arnold proved that uh, the complement is open and dense, the complement of L alpha. And uh, this uh, bad set of parameters is, in fact, uh, uh, dense, in, uh, even residual in the sense of bare. And, uh, as I mentioned before, Yokos and Penderman uh, proved that the, if A be, be belong to this good set here, we have a smooth conjugacy to, to rotation. And in fact, uh, as I mentioned before, this set has positive uh, Lebesgue measure. OK. So as uh, a, was in this, uh, in this family. A critical circle map is just an uh, orientation preserved C3 uh, circle homeomorphism with exactly one critical point of odd type. Uh, by that, I mean that uh, the critical point, uh, uh, that the, the map near the critical point is, is uh, the composition of uh, uh, a, a, a polynomial, and uh, this would be a, a C3 local diffeomorphism. Okay. Then it's always a composition of a, a, a polynomial of the even degree with a, a, a C3 diffeomorphism. OK, and uh, we, we, as I mentioned before, uh, we are considering only the case of irrational rotation number. And the first rigidity theorem, which is analogous to the Danjoa theorem for, uh, for circle diffeomorphism, for, for C2 circle diffeomorphism, is due to, to your course in 1984, where he proved that, that if you take uh, two, uh, two C3 cr critical circle maps with this, the same ir irrational rotation number, they are topologically conjugate. 
So this is a, uh, again, uh, like Danjoy, is, is a rigid result. The, the, the combinatorics uh, determines the, the topology of the, of the mapping. Okay. Uh, here is another uh, uh, full one parameter family of, uh, of circle maps. This is the, the Babasque product. The, the parameter here is gamma. When gamma, gamma varies in, the, in zero, one, this uh, also gives all possible rotation number. And uh, it's a bit uh, easier to analyze than the standard family I mentioned before. Uh, OK, uh, so this theorem I'm uh, discussing now for C3 critical circle mapping, it was already uh, known many years ago for maps that are, 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 are real analytic. If we have two critical circle maps that are, are, are real analytic and with this, the same irrational rotation number, and the, the same criticality at, uh, at the critical point, uh, then uh, the conjugacy, well, it, 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 by your cost, there is a, a unique conjugacy that maps the, the critical point into the critical point. And uh, uh, this conjugacy is always a, a C1 diffeomorphism. It is, it is C1 plus alpha at the critical point, and also the the same statement uh, as before. It is C1 plus alpha I if the rotation number satisfies uh, uh, some arithmetic condition. Uh, yes? Uh, the C1 plus alpha at the critical point statement is actually due to um, to, uh, to whom? and I. To whom? and I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the next uh, result in this direction is uh, was uh, two years ago. Uh, Pablo Guarino and myself we we proved the the result for bounded type of rotation number, and. Uh, the statement is, uh, is again uh, the same. Now it is C1 plus alpha because, in fact, the, the previous uh, set of parameter values I mentioned uh, it contains the bounded type uh, rotation numbers. And now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, with Marco Martins and Pablo Guarino, we go, we prove the theorem of the this the C1 rigidity for all rotation numbers. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, now let me discuss the the main tools in the uh, in the proof of, of this theorem. Uh, okay. Let me make some pictures here in the in the board. Okay, if we have a circle map, to have a critical point here, to have a critical value, then we can open up this, the circle at the critical, uh, the critical value, and then we get an interval. Uh, here's a critical point, here's a critical uh, value. Okay. And uh, since the, uh, we have a homeomorphism of the circle, what we have is that the, the critical value is going to be mapped, say, here. This is the, the, the second image of the, the critical value. And uh, uh, therefore, this interval here is going to be mapped uh, 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 homeomorphically in this interval here. And on the, on the other hand, this, uh, this interval here, is going to be uh, to uh, to be mapped in the complement, right? 
so the uh, a sequel homeomorphism give rise a pair of, uh, of intervals. We can draw the graph of this thing. We have here the critical point, and, uh, and then we have uh, a critical value here, and uh, And uh, this type of, uh, this pair of, uh, of interval mappings uh, coming uh, from a circle map, it has the special property that uh, they, in fact, they extend to, to a neighborhood of the interval where they are, they are defined. And in a, a neighborhood of the critical point, they commute. And this is precisely the condition that uh, they are coming uh, from the circle. And, uh, and vice versa, if you have a pair of, of interval maps, uh, map is like that. If the map is extends to a, to a bigger interval and commutes in a neighborhood of the critical point, we can glue by the dynamics then the point of interval and obtain a, a, a critical circle map uh, again. The problem here is that going from uh, uh, Commuting pairs of intervals to to circle map uh, is not uh, is not a mapping because it depends on the pa normalization of the uh, uh, the one dimensional manifold that we construct by uh, by collapsing uh, by, by gluing the endpoints and uh, and therefore uh, to each Commuting pair of intervals we can asso associate not uh, a critical circle mapping, but a full, uh, uh, a full smooth conjugacy classes of, of, of critical circle mappings. And uh, so, uh, so the idea now is, is to renormalize. In fact, uh, we we have uh, a sequence of uh, intervals, a, 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 a circle intervals, a, a, of intervals containing the critical point, so that the first return mapping to these uh, intervals are precisely mappings like that. Then we get a, a sequence of uh, uh, commuting pairs of intervals and, uh, uh, and the theorem uh, is going to be proved by, use, uh, by analyzing the, the, the behavior of the sequence of mappings for, for two mappings. Uh, this is what I, I mentioned here about the, the smooth conjugacy classes and, uh, and the the operator that uh, sends one uh, element of the sequence to the other it, it is the, the operator I'm going to, uh, to analyze, the, the, the renormalization operator. So this is, again, the same type of picture. I mean, the, the pair of, uh, of mappings, one uh, map this interval into this one homeomorphically, the other one in this one, and, uh, and uh, here, we have a picture, uh, look at the, and it, uh, the, uh, the return to the n uh, interval uh, that goes to zero. And uh, what happens is always like that. But since uh, at this stage, we don't have a, a, a fixed point, because the original mapping does not have a periodic point. Then if you iterate the end point here, it's going to eventually, <coughs> it's going to, to be mapped in the other side. Uh, and then we, we, we cut the interval at this point where the, the iterate goes to the other side. And then we get a, a new interval and uh, a new commuting pair of mappings in this interval. This new mapping, uh, in, 
in this smaller interval here is just uh, the restriction of this branch here. On the other hand, the, the mapping of, on the other branch is a composition of, of this mapping with some iterates of this one. Okay, uh, and this is precisely how we go from the, uh, one element of this sequence of mappings to the to to the other elements. To uh, so f uh, q n plus two is a composition of f q n with some iterates of f q n plus one, and and therefore it commutes. Uh, it, it always commutes in a neighborhood of the critical point. So, the, so this is the normalization operator uh, how it acts, and uh, uh, the the number of iterates we have to use here is a crucial uh, ingredient of, of the the problem, and uh, then we. W we get a sequence of integers, and this is precisely the elements of the, uh, the coefficients so of the continuous fraction expansion of the rotation number. Okay, and uh, what's the relation between this uh, sequence of mappings and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and the problem we are discussing of rigidity, of smoothness of conjugacy, uh, and this was uh, proven many years ago by myself and uh, Edson de Faria, that uh, uh, there, ex there is exists this uh, subset of fully bag measure that contains the, the bounded type rotation number, and uh, <coughs> and such that if you take a, a, a two uh, C3 critical <coughs> mappings with the same rotation number EPA, and uh, if the, uh, the C0 distance between the iterates of F and the iterates of G, of G converges to zero uh, exponentially fast, no? then the conjugacy PC1 plus alpha for some universal alpha positive. <coughs> Then in this, uh, with this arithmetic condition, uh, it's enough uh, to get exponential convergence of the, uh, in, this, in the C0 norm here, uh, in the C0 topology. And uh, later, in, in 2007, <coughs> Honey and Templisk uh, extended this result uh, and proved that if we get this exponential convergence in the C2 metric, then uh, this implies uh, C1 rigidity. So what we have to prove now is precisely this result here, that uh, we do have uh, exponentially convergence of, of the contraction of the operator in the, uh, in the C2 metric. Exponential rate of convergence? Oh, yeah, it does. But, but the exponential rate of convergence is going to, uh, to be universal. Mm. Yeah, uh, alpha depends. Mm. Oh, yeah, it, yeah, so, uh, sorry, the statement <laughs> is, is not correct. Uh, this, uh, this alpha here is, is it's not universal. It depends on the... Uh, <laughs> the rate of convergence, and uh, the rate of convergence is, is going to be universal. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> well, uh, then the next, uh, uh, the next uh, is steps uh, was that uh, we could prove the, uh, in the case of, of uh, real analytic maps, that in fact we can have exponential convergence in, in any topology. Uh, but this was using uh, quite a lot, uh, heavily uh, complex dynamics. Uh, it's really, uh, uh, and then 
and then putting together the, the previous results, which was only uh, uh, using real analysis, and uh, with this one that used uh, complex dynamics, uh, we, we got the, the final results for real, uh, real analytic uh, map. And as I mentioned before, I guess with two years ago with Pablo Guarino, we were able to, uh, to, uh, to extend the, the theorem to, uh, to, to C3 uh, mappings. And one uh, important ingredient here is a theorem that in fact was proved for any rotation number, which is the following, if, if you take a, uh, that we could uh, approximate the uh, per critical uh, circle pairs by uh, uh, analytic critical circle pairs, and uh, that belongs to a compact set of, of, of real analytic critical circle mappings. This means uh, following that we can get a, a, a sequence of, of real analytic critical circle pair, uh, pair that shadows the, the, the orbit of, of the original map. That we take uh, the n iterate of f, then we have a real analytic and uh, a, a exponential conversions here, and furthermore, this, uh, this pair here has the same rotation number as the, the, uh, uh, the iterate of f. So this was uh, a, a main tool that we had used in this uh, to prove the, the exponential conversions in this, the case of bounded combinatorics. And, uh, Using this and uh, using the fact that the, the, the renormalization operator is, is, is Lipschitz continuous in the C0 normal, we were able to, to get the final result in the case of bounded combinatorics. Well, one of the, the main ingredients in, in the real uh, part of the discussion here is uh, uh, a priori bounds uh, that were uh, obtained by Hermann Penchentek in the 80s, uh, which shows a, a big difference between critical, uh, critical circle mappings and, uh, and, uh, and circle diffeomorphism. Because if you take uh, 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 a critical circle mapping or, or, or commuting pair, and we, tar, we start to, to, to iterate this by the operator, and then uh, the, the, the conclusion is that for, a, for any big enough, the, the ratio of the length of the domains of those intervals, they are uh, between the, uh, in this interval here. So, uh, so they cannot be uh, go to zero or to, uh, to infinity. And uh, in fact, this was proved later by myself and Edson de, Fa uh, de Faria, and it is another important ingredient, is that uh, eventually, uh, for any big enough, that uh, both mapping, they have negative Schwarz and derivative. What is this movement? Huh? What is this movement? Oh, C3. Uh, this is just C3, and uh, those are just a, just a real uh, analysis argument. There is uh, no, uh, no complex analysis here. Is there a huh? on the rotation numbers here? What? Is there a restriction on the rotation no. numbers? No. Uh, no restriction on the rotation numbers. Just working. It was used by Armand uh, many years ago to prove uh, that, uh, uh, that critical uh, circle mappings with unbounded combinatorics could not be quasi-symmetrically conjugated to, to rotation. Uh, because in rotation, uh, uh, 
for, for circle diffeomorphism, we have precisely the same picture here, Ex except that the graphic uh, can get very close to the uh, to the diagonal. Okay, and it, it does get, get very close to the diagonal, and then uh, if the uh, transition time here is, is, is very big, it's very close to the diagonal, and this interval uh, must be very small compared with this, right? And, and for, for critical circle map, this uh, never happens. We have this interval, if you look at this other interval, and also this, this first iterate here, this interval and this interval, uh, and the whole interval, they are all commensurable. They are all comparable in size, always. I, and this does not depend on the, 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 the number of iterates uh, that you have to use to go to the other side. And the only thing that can happen, uh, happen here is, is that you get an almost parabolic, if this number grows, it's just because you have an almost parabolic uh, 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 fixed point here. The, the graph gets close to the diagonal, but the fact that this interval here and uh, this one is big means that uh, the and the Schwartz, uh, Schwartz and derivative is negative. You have a bound for the derivative. It is bounded from below and uh, and above in all those intervals here, and the, the second derivative is also controlled. And this was an important uh, ingredient here in the, in the proof. Well, for not in ingredient we use, uh, it was a Yokos lemma. Uh, Yokos lemma says, says the following, if we take uh, uh, a mapping of the interval, perhaps the diagonal, and you have a mapping precisely with this condition here. Uh, to have that uh, this uh, interval is comparable to the to the full interval, and uh, to have an almost fixed point. And uh, if you iterate here, okay, you, you may iterate a long time. And if the, uh, the, the last interval here also has a size comp comparable to the, uh, to the whole interval, and uh, the Schwarz derivative is, is negative, then you have the control of, uh, of the size of all the iterates here. You, oh, sorry. Uh, if you take the iterates of the, the initial point here, okay, take all the iterates and uh, take each fundamental domain, uh, the interval between two iterates here, and then the, the size of, the, of those intervals for i less than, than half of, of the iteration is commensurable to one of, uh, of i square. And for i bigger or equal uh, half of the iterate, uh, it's commensurable to one of uh, a minus i square. So uh, to have an estimate of this, the size of those intervals. Uh, OK, uh, so, so this is another ingredient that, that we, we use. And, uh, and I, uh, I had another problem to, to, to control here, is the problem that uh, in my paper with uh, Guarino, we had uh, uh, this, this shadowing property by real anal analytic was obtained upon in this, this C0 topology. And then we, we had to, to get uh, a a better result and to get a passito shadowing in order to try to, to use uh, honey Templisky argument. But, uh, but here was uh, an easy part of the argument because we could uh, 
use the the uh, 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 an argument that we learned from a, a paper of Lubitsch. Uh, it's uh, based on the, the so-called uh, Hadamard tricircle argument, and uh, which is this one. If you take a, a, a family of of holomorphic mappings and uh, that are uniformly bound, uh, bounded and uh, uh, in a, a domain that uh, contains strictly uh, an interval i, and then, uh, uh, and then the, uh, the CR norm of the interval for any of those maps is, is controlled by uh, the C0 norm to a, to a power alpha. Uh, and then we can, uh, if we have a control, a uh, exponential co control of the uh, of the distance in the C0 norm, we will obtain also an exponential control uh, of the, the norm in the, in, the, in the C2 topology. And this was combined with a previous result uh, that I, I had with uh, Edson de Faria, where we, we could prove uh, C2 shadowing, but with, with, without, without commutation. And with, uh, with uh, Guarino, we, we prove uh, C0 uh, uh, shadow with commutation. And then using this, uh, uh, this lemma here, we are able to, to prove uh, uh, C2 shadow with commutation. Uh, so this was another uh, important ingredient in the proof. And, uh, and the key lemma, in fact, uh, was uh, uh, this one, was to prove that uh, the, the, the renormalization operator is, uh, is Lipschitz in, in, in the C2 norm. Okay? And this, uh, but this only along uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the mappings that uh, have the, 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 the same rotation number. Because for unbounded combinatorics, it's clear that uh, the, uh, the operator is, is not Lipschitz at all. You have extremely big expansions, and they cannot be Lipschitz, cannot be holder, cannot be anything. Uh, but uh, uh, if we restrict to mappings with the same rotation number, then we get a universal Lipschitz constant. And this was uh, a key lemma and, the, uh, and is the, the, has, uh, the hardest uh, part of our, of our proof. And uh, here we, uh, we have no strong tools to use. It's, it's just uh, uh, delicate estimates. And, uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, using this uh, this previous result, it, 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 it's quite, uh, quite clear how to prove the, uh, the exponential convergence because we have uh, uh, the two mappings, F and G here. We, st we start uh, to iterate these mappings, okay? And then you have this, this, this compact set of real analytic pairs. And uh, if we iterate, uh, then we come closer, uh, then we can, uh, sh uh, by shadowing, both can be, uh, be shadowed by, by real analytic pairs with this, the same uh, uh, combinatorics, but by the, uh, the, the result for, for, for real analytic mappings, we have this exponential convergence here. And then, uh, if we start iterating here, this is going to, uh, to, to expand a little bit by the, this Lipsch, uh, but controlled by this Lipschitz constant. And then we can, uh, we can prove that it cannot go too far if this iterator here is, is much smaller than this one. Uh, so more precisely, we, 
What we do is precisely this. You, you estimate the, if you want to, uh, to estimate the C2 distance between those two iterates, you, uh, we just write uh, the iterate as uh, beta n uh, and one minus beta n, where beta is a small constant, because you have this Lipschitz constant, you have the, uh, the exponent of the convergence for this uh, shadowing property. And uh, if we take a beta small, then it's clear that uh, L to the beta lambda 1 minus beta is going to be less than a row less than 1. And, uh, and then we can split the, the, uh, this distance. Uh, you can write it in, in this way. And then uh, using the decimates here, we get the, the exponential conversions. So this is the, uh, the uh, how we get uh, the exponential conversions in, in the in the C2 map. We use the, the, the result for, for real analytic, and we use the, the shadowing profits and uh, combining the two we get the, the, the exponential convergence. So this is the, the, the final proof. Uh, and uh, the, the main thing we had to, uh, to do was uh, precisely this, uh, this uh, uh, Lipschitz, pro uh, to prove this Lipschitz, uh, Lipschitz property of the, uh, the operator. Uh, and this is quite easy in the case, uh, it's trivial in the case of bounded combinatorics, but in the case of unbounded combinatorics, it is very, uh, is, is very subtle. Uh, if you take, for example, two mappings like that uh, with a very big period here, and uh, if we start uh, to iterate here, and we look at the last point. We start with x0, and then the last iterate of is xa. And uh, if we take a perturbation of this mapping here, we would like to, to say something about the distance between uh, xa and uh, the corresponding point uh, iterate for the other map. And uh, the question is to, to, to know whether this is uh, uh, bounded by one of the important ingredients uh, here is to prove that uh, this is, uh, is bounded by the, uh, the, uh, a constant time this, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, C2 distance between the two mappings. This usually is not true. I mean, if you take two mappings like that, this will never happen. This is easy to see. But if we look at further, further renormalization, when we need all of them, then we can prove this statement here, if the two mappings have exactly the same rotation number. So it depends on the full uh, on the full uh, 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 continued fraction, not only the first one. I mean, uh, we have to look at all of them. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, one of the main uh, dilemmas we had to prove to get this, uh, this uh, Lipschitz condition. And uh, I would like to, to end by uh, asking some questions that we don't know the answer. And uh, uh, the problem here, it's clear that uh, the this, this situation for critical circle mapping in, in, in some sense is uh, is more controlled than the, 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 the situation for diffeomorphisms because we 
we have the C1 rigidity for all rotation numbers. On the other hand, for a smooth diffeomorphism, yeah, for a smooth uh, diffeomorphism, we have the, the, the conjugacy, uh, conjugacy is, is very smooth. We just lose a little bit of derivative. It is CR, you, uh, then the conjugacy is, uh, is CR minus 2 or something like that. But uh, uh, for critical circle mappings, we just uh, get C1 plus alpha. We don't know how to, to go beyond it. Uh, so, so the question, uh, question is, would uh, be the Following, uh, there exists path and G, uh, critical circle mapping. With the, the same uh, rotation number. But one of the types, say, eh? <coughs> or uh, even the golden ratio, no? the, such that, that the conjugacy is not uh, C2. Yeah. Uh, Say so FG critical uh, circle mapping. Uh, in fact, we can ask people the real analytic. We have two critical circle maps with uh, real uh, analytic with a very good rotation number, and uh, but the conjugacy is not C2. I I believe this may be true, but I, uh, I don't know how to, to prove that. And uh, another question that, uh, that is interesting also is uh, when we have more, more, more critical points. If you have a homeomorphism, for example, with Two critical points, uh, C1, uh, C2, uh, okay? Uh, well, if we have a, a homeomorphism like that, uh, a critical circle map is that, by your cause, uh, it's always uh, uh, two like that are always conjugate. But uh, but the question is whether what type of, of rigidity we can expect here. It's clear that it's not rigid because, uh, as we know, th uh, there is a, 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 a unique invariant measure, and uh, and the the, uh, the ratio of of the measures between those two intervals is clearly a, a smooth conjugacy invariant. So in this case, we have at least a, a one parameter family of different uh, 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 we have a conjugacy invariant, uh, one conjugacy invariant. And uh, the question is whether the, the, the ratio is the same if the conjugacy is again smooth, if this is the only conjugacy invariant, C1 conjugacy invariant, uh, a C1 conjugacy invariant right? Uh, uh, well, another uh, remark is that it's clear. Also, uh, it's quite easy to see that uh, if we have a, a C1 conjugacy. The, uh, the criticality must be the same. So it's, uh, this is something uh, that follows us. Eh? Yeah? Uh, 
uh, okay, let me write it here again. Uh, bigger for the same question. Uh, uh, F and G, r r real analytic, critical circle mappings, with uh, the same Rotation number of bounded type such that the conjugacy is not C2. Uh, the, uh, the same uh, question also uh, we can ask for interval mappings. Uh, you, you have two, uh, two unimodal mappings uh, uh, that are uh, in the stable manifold of the, the fixed point where the, you can find s somebody in the stable manifold of the fixed point which is, is not uh, C2 conjugate in the critical orbit. Mm -hmm. The same question. Okay, I always stop here. Well, no. No information and and also no information about the uh, the structure of the the leaves. Can you say something? So what what is the right to do as a transversal? Yeah. Yeah, but we don't have any information even about the <coughs> the leaves that the themselves because this uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, uh, even if it is a, a Lipschitz man. Uh, yeah? How about analytic case? How about analytic case? I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps Jan Polska has some. Uh, uh, some information. Can it be absolutely continuous? What? Can it be absolutely continuous? Yes, no. Uh, for the wrong maybe mentioned. I could anticipate it to be smooth. It's not so high tight. Mm -hmm. It's not here. <laughs> if you replace C2 by something higher, there is no What happens if you replace C2 by something higher? Higher is where, where you expect the limit to be. I don't know either. I don't know anything. I, uh, the only thing we get is, is, is C1 plus alpha. We don't know how to go beyond that. And also uh, for real analytic maps, the same. And uh, C1 plus alpha also depends on the rotation number.
Are there other questions? Let's take 